Word of Life with Rev. Mitzi Gibson is made possible in part by Grace Christian Center, Margaret's Beauty Salon, Holly's AC and Refrigeration, and Harold and Elsie Broussard. Welcome to the World of Life. My name is Mixie Gibson, once again with you. And I decided to speak the Word of God that is the one that fit us, give us strength and stamina. Every time that we speak the Word, every time that we read the Word, we are feeding our spirit, our soul, our soul beginning to grow and be fat. You eat breakfast, you eat lunch, you eat meal in the, in the night. The same way that you have to feed your body, the same way we need to feed our soul, our spirit. So we need to remember that the only way that we can feed our spirit, our soul, to maintain our body in good shape is through your word, through the word of God Almighty. If we don't read the word, if we don't uh, speak the word, we are just, you know, like a picture hanging in the, in, the, in the wall. Because no matter if you're working, no matter if you try to go to the church, no matter what you do, but if you don't read in the world, that is your nutrition, you beginning to faint spiritually, you beginning to faint. And you beginning to feel like a, everything you do is not working the way it's supposed to be, but it's because you don't have been feeding your soul with the word of God. So in the book of Romans, I'm going to be reading something that is very, very important for us to, to start the teaching. And it says in the book of Romans, chapter uh, 5, verse 8, But God showed us clearly proved his own love for us by the fact that, well, we were still a sinner, Christ the Messiah, the anointed one, died for us. Jesus Christ came to die for us. Therefore, since we are now justified, we are justified and we have made righteous and brought into the right relationship with God our Father by Christ Jesus' blood, how much more our sentiment is that we shall be saved by him from the indignation and the wrath of God Almighty. For what? If it was, we were as enemies of God. We were reconciled to God through the death of Jesus Christ, his son. It is much more certain now that we are reconciled, that we shall be saved daily, daily, because we are reconciled with God our Father. We are saved daily, delivered daily from sin dominion. Sin has no dominion over us any longer. If we have been reconciled with God, that's part of the covenant. God cleans us. Our, our soul is cleansed. Our life is clean. So minds, we need to let the Holy Spirit transform us. Because it's very, very clear over here, they say. If we have been reconciled with the Father, and then we have been saved daily, delivered from sin dominion. In other words, if the devil trying to make you sin, you can say, no, I have been delivered from the dominion that you have over me, Satan. Now, sometimes it happens that we commit a sin. And I know that I have to do a lot because Satan is involved. It's not something that you wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to be sinning. No. You get up in the morning, you give thanks to the Lord because you are alive, and you say, thank you, Lord, because you have saved me, I'm alive, I'm still breathing. Thank you, but my family, my children, everybody is alive. And it's all because Jesus Christ came to die for us. And we have received him as Lord and Savior. So because we have received Jesus as Lord and Savior, our sin have been forgiven, our iniquity have been forgiven, our transgression have been forgiven. So in that case, and then we see over here that the word say very clearly that we have forgiven our sin, iniquity, transgression, and sin dominion the sin, we have been delivered daily, every day we have been delivered from sin dominion. Praise God, I love that verse. I love that verse. 
We are delivered daily from sin dominion. In other words, Satan has no part in your life. And if you sin by accident or purposely, and still you have the right to come to, in the book of 1 John say, if you sin, God is grace, full of grace and mercy and compassion to the, the forgive your sins that you commit that moment. All what you need to do is come to God and ask you, and ask him to forgive you what you have done. It's almost say, you know, we. But remember that it's God Almighty that God gave you the forgiveness of sin. That's why he sent his son to die for us. And when you ask the Lord to forgive you, he said, yes, my son paid the price. Now, let me tell you this. Not because you ask God to forgive you, you are going to make, commit sin every time that you feel like it, purposely, because that is not, you can play with God. God knows when you try to play with him. And praise God, don't even try to play with God because you are going to be the loser. The devil is going to use that against you. And it's nothing that God is going to be able to do because you're turning yourself loose to the hand of the devil by lying and deceiving. Try to lie and deceive God. No. God knows when you're purposely doing it. And he knows when you accidentally done it. Done it. And he knows when it's just what, something that happened. But either way, ask God to forgive you. Even if you purposely did it, ask God to forgive you. He's going to forgive you, but don't repeat it. Don't keep it repeating the same thing over and over. And if you repeat it, please ask God to forgive you over and over and over. Remember in the book of uh, Matthew, Matthew said, he, he forgives you seven times seven, seven, seven times seven. But I don't want to come to the face of God Ask him to forgive me for the thing that I had done three or four times in the row. That means that I have no self-control. And the self-control is not from me. I have to let Jesus Christ be in control of my soul and help me to overcome the sin that, it, that I've been committing over and over, the same sin. No, it's not good. And the reason I say it's not good because I will be, I am embarrassed. I have gone through that situation once many years, times ago, and I don't want it to do it. It's embarrassing. I feel embarrassed in front of my father to say the same thing. Oh, here I am again, commit the same sin. It's like I'm playing a game. It, to me, it's very painful, very painful. Now, not only so, but we also rejoice in exalting glory of God in his love and perfection and the perfection of God Almighty. So we see that through the Lord Jesus Christ, whom we have now received and enjoy our reconciliation with the Father. Therefore, as a sin came into the world through one man, Adam, and death as a the result of sin, so death spread to all men. No one being able to stop it or escape of the power, but Jesus did. No man be able, but Jesus did at the cross of Calvary. I'm going to be reading now in this book of Psalm. Once we have read that Jesus Christ paid the price for us and for a redeemer from the course of the law, well, I'm going to listen what it sound, the book of Psalm say. Psalm 107, one and two. Give thanks to the Lord for his good and for his mercy and loving kindness endureth forever. Give thanks to the Lord for his good and his mercy and loving kindness endureth forever. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so. That the Lord who hath delivered us from the hand of the adversary. Give thanks to the Lord. He hath redeemed us from the hand of Satan. He has redeemed us from the dead, eternal dead. So what we need to do is just give thanks to the Lord forever and ever. God's love never run out and off out of us. He set us free, but we have been set free by God. We need to tell him and the whole world how he has freed us from oppression, frustration, sickness, and infirmity, and delivered us from our enemies. Redemption is everything. 
Tradition gives you the, uh, the, 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 the blessing to come to be before the God Almighty and say, this is my problem, this is my situation. Please help me, forgive me if I am, I, I am the one that caused this situation and help me to get out. That's part, part of redemption. Redemption is manifested that daily when we commit something wrong. We, have been, we are the redeemer of the Lord. That's what it said. The less the redeemer of the Lord say so. Say so, I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed. I have been delivered from the hand of the adversary, Satan himself or any person. Sometimes person try to, will hold us, try to control us and not for good reason. You know, so we need to be careful what we do or what we say or how we're doing it. Now in the book of Colossians, I'm gonna be reading now. Thank you, Father God, you are a good God. Very good God, in Jesus' name. In the book of Colossians, we're going to be reading. Thank you, Father. The versículo 1, Colossians 1, and verse 12 and 14. Thank you, Father. The Lord is good and his mercy endure forever. Give thanks to the Father who has qualified us and made us fit to share the portion which is the inheritance of the same, God, holy people in the light. Give thanks to the Lord again. In verse, in, in, the, in the Psalm 107, verse one and two, it say, let the redeemer of the Lord say so. Now over here in the Libro of the Colossians again, in other words, we need to be thankful. We, we, need, we need to give thanks to the Lord continuously. Not because he had done something that moment, but because you are being delivered for everlasting life. Every time that I had the opportunity to say, God, I'm so glad that you redeemed me. I'm so glad, I'm so happy that I can come into your presence anytime. I don't have to wait to ask for a time for you to see me. I am his daughter. I come to him and I talk to him as my father. I talk to him as my Lord. I talk to him as my friend. I mean, you, he is everything that you need. He's, he is everything you need. So I give thanks to him when I get up. I give thanks to him when I'm doing this cooking or everything. I give thanks. I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I will never go to hell. And I, I will not go to hell. I know I'm not going to hell because God has saved me. He is my redeemer. He's my savior, Jesus Christ. So this, again, I'm going to be reading verse 12. Give thanks to the Father who has qualified us and made us, made us, my family, my children, my grandchildren, children, children. You put your, fa your family in yourself now that you wa you're watching this program or listen to this program. God has given, th uh, give thanks to the Lord, the Father, who has qualified us and made us to fit, to share the portion. In other words, the inheritance that Jesus had, the portion which is the inheritance of the same. God, holy, people in the light. We have received an inheritance. Once we receive Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, everything that Jesus has, we have. Everything that Jesus, we ask Jesus, according to his will, we get it. We need to remember that God is good God. <coughs> Excuse me. The Father has delivered us and drew to himself out of the control and dominion of the darkness. And has transferred us into the kingdom of his son, who of his love, <coughs> excuse me, in whom we have our redemption. There we go again, we have been redeemed. <coughs> we have been redeemed from the course of the law. And he said, in whom we have redemption through his blood, which means the forgiveness of our sin. <coughs> All our sins have been forgiven. Now, he is, the, he is, Jesus Christ is the exact likeness of the unseen God, the visible God, representation of the, invis the visible. He is the firstborn of the creation. So Jesus Christ is everything. Everything we want, everything we need, we get it through him. He's the key. Give my credit card for heaven. If you, uh, let me put it simple. 
The same way that you have a credit card to buy grocery, to buy whatever you have a credit card, my credit card is Christ. His name is my credit card to heaven and in this earth. Because everything that is in the earth belongs to God. So I always say in the name of Jesus this, in the name of Jesus that, in the name of Jesus there, everything, he's my credit card. He said, use my name. He has given me authority unto you to use his name. And his name is what opened doors. God opened door when you say in the name of Jesus, Father, boom, the door is open. In the name of Jesus, Father, I need a job. Keep on praying, don't give up, that you will have a job. God is not a God that, that lie. We human beings lie, but God is not a God that he lie. Whatever he said that he will do, that he's going to do, he will do it. He's a, keep, a promise keeper. So what we need to do, yes, remember to believe that he is the one who forgives us all our sin. All our sin have been forgiven by him. The Lord, our Father, who makes us strong enough to take part of everything bright and beautiful, because Jesus is a delight, he's beautiful, that he has for us who live in the light. He has given us everything, everything good, bright, beautiful. I mean, what else we need? Only Christ to give us everything. He has rescued us out of the darkness, out of the hand of Satan, out of the kingdom of darkness. He set us up in the kingdom of his son, who he loved and sent to die for us, and so much more. Now, we are free from going to the pit of hell. God, rid, God has rid, get rid of all of sin once and for all. Once and for all, we are set free from sin. In the book of Ephesians, I'm gonna be reading now, God is good, thank you, Jesus. In the book of Ephesians, chapter one, verse seven say, in Christ Jesus, in him, we have redemption. We're talking about redemption. The redemption, the redemption is the blood of Jesus Christ that paid the price for us. Let me tell you one thing, that life is in the blood. Your life is in the blood. And the life that Jesus gave was his blood. So I believe that the blood of Jesus Christ, once I received Jesus Christ, before I will have in my blood, the blood of my father and my mother. But I believe, this is my belief. I don't say that you have to believe it. I believe it for myself. That the blood of Jesus Christ is flow through my veins because I am the redeemer of God. Everything is new to me. I'm a new creation, I'm a child of God. All things pass away, all things have become new. The blood is new, that's my belief. Now, don't you call me and send me a telephone call or, or letter because that's my belief. You don't have to believe what I believe. But I know that I'm connected with my father. And I know that if he has changed me and I am made in the image and likeness of Jesus Christ, and then everything that he is, I am. And everything that he has is me. And everything that flows through his vein is flow through my vein because he lives inside of me. And if he's inside of me, and then everything that he is, I am. I am a new creation. I'm a child of God. All things pass away. All things have come new. Jesus Christ lives inside of me. And because Jesus Christ lives inside of me, and then everything he is, I am. You know, I am. Everything that he is. Inside of me lives the God of the creation, the universe. And he's not only living me, but everything that he is, he has deposited in me. So that means his blood, that is, the blood is to give life. If you go to the hospital, if you have no blood, they right away say, that person is dead. And when a person is dying, the first thing that begins to fail is the blood, beginning to go because the life is in the blood. And Jesus said he has made us a new creation. We are child of God. All things have passed away. All things have become new. Jesus Christ not inside of me. 
to let me live the way I was before and to have in my organs everything that I was before. That's the reason we say all the time that we pray. Thank you, Father God. You have made me a new creation. You have given me a new heart. I am free from heart attack. I will not have heart attack because you said that I am a new creation. You have given me a new organs. I believe that I have a new organs. The enemy tried to keep me sick. I say I'm not sick because I see the sickness, but I don't accept it because God said that he delivered us from the course of the law. And every sickness is a course. And if Jesus lives inside of me, he's not sick. And therefore, I don't have to receive what the devil is trying to put in me. I might feel it, I might see it, I might have it, but I don't have to receive it. I don't have to receive it. I fight it, and I fight it, and I fight it because I am a new creation. I am a new creation, and I don't care what people say, you're still sick. No, the, the symptom is there, but I don't receive it. Why should I receive something that God already has paid at the cross with Jesus Christ at Calvary? No. That will be injustice, the Messiah. Not receive what Jesus has done for me. I'm grateful. I'm very grateful that he is and, and continue to be inside of me. Amen? Now, in the book of Ephesians, he said, In him we have redemption, deliverance, and salvation. Salvation. Salvation is everything. Salvation is healthy. Salvation is freedom from the curse. Salvation is freedom from sickness and diseases, from poverty. Everything. Salvation covers everything. When you say you have everything, everything. Deliver us from, uh, we, uh, in him we have been had redemption, deliver us salvation through his blood, the remission of forgiveness of our offenses, all the shortcomings that we commit daily, all the trespasses that we're going through sometimes, according with his riches and generosity of his gracious favor. All is in his, God is a God of grace. And in his favor, we receive everything. I mean, it's not that I deserve it, but I know that he did it and I receive it. I don't deserve it, but he made me worth it. He redeemed it. He redeemed me. So I'm going to receive what he has paid for me. I don't want to say I'm sick and I'm going to stay sick. No, that was many times. It takes time to you grow in that stage. Before I was sick, I was, okay, I'm sick, oh, I'm sick. I'm, but now I get sick, I said, no, I had this symptom, but it's not going to stay with me. I fight it because Jesus took that sickness in the cross at Calvary. And I will not going to be ungrateful. Jesus did it, I receive it. He says, mine, I accept it. He said that he healed me, I am healed. Simple than that. And people are going to tell you, you're still coughing. Yeah, but it's not for me. It is not my cough. It is, I'm coughing, but it's the symptom that I don't want it. And I say, demon spirit of the cough, I command you to get out of my body. I repeat it on and on that you have to go. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the earth. Satan is a liar and deceiver. He came to steal and, 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 and kill and destroy. He don't going to kill me. He's not going to destroy me. I have been paid with the blood that Jesus cried. He cannot touch me. He cannot touch you. Only if you open the door, he will do it. But if you know who you are, if you know who you come from, and who you know who is your father, and you know who is your redeemer, you walk in complete assurance that you are a child of God. And if you are a child of God, God, your father, will not going to let you down. He already said his son, what else do you want? In the name of Jesus, everything is done. What else do you want? He can die again. He already did it. He paid for you, for redemption, for the curse, is sickness, poverty, and everything that is in the earth, that is a curse, the devil tried to put on you and in me. But we have to remember, I am being set free from the curse that is in the earth. I am a citizen of heaven. I am in the air, but I don't, don't belong to the air. I belong to God, my Father. I'm walking in the earth, yes, but I'm 
protected by my Father God through Christ Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit. I have to walk over here, but I'm protected. I'm protected. You should be protected. We have to claim what belongs to us. Don't play. You read the word, you accept it. You, come, you could repeat it and believe it and believe it till you have it in your heart. You have to go on and on and on. I have learned on and on and on. It takes me time sometimes, but I keep on doing it on and on. When something is new and I have to look, look for the verse, I look for the verse, I say, this is what it say. And Jesus said, whatever is written in the book of the Lord of Moses and the book of the prophet and the book of Psalm, it shall be fulfilled. So what I'm reading is exactly what he said that will be fulfilled. So I'm reading what he has given me and it will be fulfilled in my life. It will be fulfilled. To God be the glory. I have not done nothing but be grateful and receive what he had done for me. I'm grateful. Father God, I pray for the people that are watching this program. If they have not received Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, the key for salvation and redemption, I ask them to pray with me this prayer. I am a sinner. I have done everything that a sinner can commit. I repent and I ask you to forgive me. I receive Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for me. I now believe that I am a new creation. I am under your wing. You are my protector. You are my redeemer. And I receive that redemption. I receive your blood that you pay for me. Thank you for saving me. And thank you for being my God. In Jesus' name, so be it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Remember, redemption is a word that it has a lot of significance. A lot of significance. It's not just a word, it's a lot. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ and your home and your family and your job. Whatever you need, may the Lord fulfill to you the desire of your heart. May the Lord continue to keep you safety, full of life, and most of all, in good relationship with Christ Jesus, in good relationship with the Holy Spirit, because he is your defender, he's your protector, he's your shield. In Jesus' glorious name, remember that God sent him because he loved you. And Jesus died because he loved you. And the Holy Spirit lives in you because he loves you. So what else we want? Nothing more but them. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the angel that he sent to protect us daily. To God be the glory. God bless you. To the next time we see each other, be blessed, completely full of life, and good, good health. To God be the glory. Amen. It's the Word of Life. The Word of Life with Reverend Mitzi Gibson is made possible in part by life. Grace Christian Center, Margus Beauty Salon, Tolly's AC and Refrigeration, and Harold and Elsie Broussard. It's the word of life.